first things first I'ma say all the words inside my head I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been oh, ooh, the way that th Hi, I'm Mr. Matlack I'm going to show you the parts of a microscope today This particular microscope is an Olympus It may be a little more complicated than one of the ones you have um, or some of the parts may be in slightly different places, so you'd have to look and, and compare yours to this. But on this particular microscope, as all microscopes, you've got a base, then you've got an arm, and up here you've got the oculars or eyepieces. There's two names for them. This is the nose piece here where the objective lenses are. Now I have four objective lenses. You may have three or two or even one. If you see the shortest one, if you have four, is called a scanning objective. And it's 4x by itself. And then the next one is the low power. And I know that sounds funny because scanning is actually lower in power than low power. But my guess is that originally there was a low and a high, and then they, as they added objectives, they had to invent names. Low power is 10x. And on my microscope, they're color-coded for your convenience. So there's a yellow here on a low power, 10x, and a red for scanning. Next in line is the high power objective, which is generally 40 or 45x. And by that I mean times whatever the oculars are, which is 10. So in general, your total magnification is arrived at by multiplying the objective. And you can see this written. Look, it's a hard to find, but you can see what the power is on each of these. So if you forget this information, just get down really close to the microscope and engraved in the objective, it will tell you its magnification. So to review, we have scanning, low, high, and then finally, oil immersion, which is somewhere around 100x, sometimes a little less. It needs a drop of oil, almost a liquid lens, to allow it to be that powerful. If you think about it, there's not much room. So the only thing that would, there's not even much room in a high power. So the only thing that would allow this to be more powerful is something that's bendable like a liquid and it's a special oil. We will not use that lens objective very often. Generally only for bacteria. This is the stage of the microscope. Here you have uh, a mechanical stage, so some of you might have just stage clips, but here we have a fancy mechanical stage. The slide will fit all the way in to here, and there's a little spring-loaded uh, clamp that holds it in, and then you move it back and forth from the lower knob and up and down here. Over here is the course objective. Notice that when I move that, that the stage goes up and down, bringing the specimen up to the objective for focusing. You will need to only use that in the two lower objectives because there's enough room, and I'm sure you'll get more on that later. This is the high, the fine focus, which allows you to make it particularly clear after you've gotten it generally in focus. This of course is the cord outlet here. You want to turn your microscope on, there's going to be somewhere a switch, my particular light switch or lamp switch also has a dimmer switch attached here. And the lamp itself is down here again on the base. The amount of light that gets through the stage up to the specimen uh, through this clear slide is regulated by the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a little hard to see. Sometimes you actually have to get down up and look below the stage, but it's just a little disc. And what it does is lets the light like that through. So it just works that way. And as I turn it, the light from the lamp is coming up and that now right now there's a lot getting into this specimen and it's going to be much darker um, if I turn it um, the other way. In my microscope, to the left is more light, to the right is less. You don't want to really um, mess with this. This is in place generally, but you can, in some microscopes, if you would prefer, 
turn it this way it's a little more compact always make sure this set screw or thumb screw excuse me is tight so this microscope is a binocular microscope meaning we have two eyepieces some of you may be using one one eyepiece or monocular microscope um, if you're using a binocular you need to keep both of your eyes open and sometimes you'll have a double image a few tricks to use to get rid of the double image are to move the two eyepieces or oculars up or down and to move your head closer or away from the ocular and that should give you a single circle image. When carrying a microscope Always put one hand on the arm and one hand on the base. Always, always use two hands. Let's watch a good student and a bad student preparing a wet mount slide. Notice the good student makes sure the slide is clean and fingerprintless. She holds it on the edges of the slide. After putting her specimen on, she puts a few drops of water on the specimen. Notice the bad student isn't paying attention. Then she takes one cover slip. Be careful just to take one touches it to the edge of the water and drops it. That will create a slide with no air bubbles. Make sure the bottom of your slide is dry and there's no extra water on top of the cover slip. I prepared my slide and I'm going to put it on the stage and then I'll move the stage clip, put my slide on there, make sure I'm on the lowest power objective and it's all the way down and I want to have what I'm looking at right over the light source so I can look in, maybe blurry, and I'm just going to focus up until something comes into view. And now I've got it right where I want it, under low power, that's where I'm going to start. Hello, I'm Miss Stevens. I'm going to continue from where Mr. Aronian left off in how to focus and move up to higher powers. So the, the lens should be in low power here. We focused it and we've also looked at the specimen and centered the specimen with our mechanical adjustment. At that point, you don't touch any dials and you move up to the next objective lens, which is the 10 times lens. Again, you use the coarse focus to get it in focus. You probably won't have to move it very much. And then move the specimen into the center of your field of view. Once that's in focus and centered, then you can move up to the next power, the 45 times. You use the fine focus to get it in focus and center it, and that is as far as you're gonna go. And that is how you focus a microscope. <laughs> what? Can't get this in focus. Tried everything. Um, Miss Stevens, Miss Stevens. Oh, Katie, look! Your objective lens is like two inches above your slide. Something is wrong. So go back to the very beginning, to the lowest power. All right. Um, go all the way back to the lowest, lowest power. And move, use your course focus to get the slide as close to the objective lens as possible. There you go. Now, is it in focus? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, center it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now move up to the next lens. Make sure it's clicked in. Okay, look through. Use the course adjustment to focus. Perfect. Is it in the center? Now center your specimen. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't touch anything then. Move up to the next one. Okay. It's a high power. Use your fine focus. You see it? I do. There you go, you did it! You just have to follow the focusing directions. <laughs> I can't see anything. Oh, oh, teacher! can't see anything in my microscope. Okay, well, we've got a couple problems. So first, can you sit on the stool oh, sure. and can you scoot this onto the bench so it doesn't fall on the floor? Great. Oops, it looks like you forgot to plug your microscope in, so that would be step one. Thanks. And then remember, um, you know, it's a great idea to totally undo the cord just because sometimes the cord goes across the light. That's really hard to see. Oh, that makes sense. And then this is not your fault, but this light switch was designed by an Andover engineer, and it's like way back in here. Dig your finger in there. There okay. it is. Okay, now we're all set. Great. Great. Go. Thank you. Yep. Oh man, my field of view is half dark, half light. All I can see is this little arrow. Well, the first thing we don't do in here, we don't whine. Whining oh. is no whining. All right, those. Let's see. Yeah. Well, what do you say you're seeing in there? So, in my field of view, it's half light and half dark. Half I don't know why. Half light and half dark. Can I do something? Well, have you checked to see that your lens is clicked in? Try that. No. you hear anything? There's all the right, clicked. so take okay. a look again. Is that oh, any better? great. So now all I'm seeing is this dark line. Can you take oh. a look? Well, I do see that dark line. Is oh. it, where is it coming from? Where do you see it? So it's in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. It's this dark pointed line. Okay, can you turn turn the ocular lens a little bit? Does that line move? Oh, it does. Yeah, so what do you think that helps you do? Is that for helping other people um, figure out what I'm looking at? It's a pointer? That's right. Or right. If, you're con if you're confused about what a structure is, then you can put that pointer right on that line. Awesome. Right, the pointer right on whatever you're asking about. Wonderful. So, so we've solved two problems. Thank you very much. Okay. Bones sinking like stones, all that we fall for. Homes, places we've grown, all of us are done. Places we've grown, all of us are done.